everyone who's joined us to this photo Man webinar uh, with the partnership uh, with the photo managers. We have Katie Nelson with us. I'll introduce you in a second. And Isabel also will help us uh, answer all the questions. Um, we're very excited for that and we're very happy to host webinars. We love it. We think it's a great way to communicate and also share a lot of new features, updates, and of course, tips about how to organize your photos and scan your photos. Um, so again, hello and welcome. Um, let me introduce Caddy Nelson, which he is uh, the CEO and co-founder of the Photo Managers, which is a dedicated community committed to assisting an individual in effectively managing uh, their photos collections and sharing their unique stories. Um, and today, Mark, our first webinar in a series of three, we'll have two more webinars with Kathy in the next two months. Uh, you can write the date, but of course, we'll announce it via email and in the messages um, in the upcoming weeks. So our next webinar will be on April 18th, which will be tips on creating your photo legacy. And uh, in May, we're going to have a webinar on May 16th, which will be tips on managing digital photos chaos, um, as you all have. Uh, we all have. So as we embark on this journey together, uh, we encourage you to actively engage asking questions in the Q&A section. As, as I mentioned before, we're here to ensure your queries are, are addressed uh, uh, um, both during uh, and after the session. Uh, before we dive right in into the heart of today's discussion and webinar, I would like to share some exciting updates from PhotoMind. So we're thrilled to announce uh, that we roll out our AI feature that was only available on iOS devices, also on Android devices. Uh, okay, the second thing is we would like to invite you to stay connected with us on social media, particularly on YouTube, which we can find a lot of uh, videos about all our new features and information about our upcoming features as well. Um, and the last announcement that I have on my end is that don't miss out our spring sale, which is happening this weekend on our Amazon accessories. So you can enjoy up to 25% off of all our Amazon accessories. Um, so it's perfect time to enhance your photo management setup. Um, so again, all these details will be sent to you after the webinar in the email that you register with. Um, yeah, so again, I'm very happy and very exciting uh, for this opportunity. And thank you, Kathy and Isabel. Um, for being here with us. Uh, so without further ado, um, let's extend a warm welcome to Caddy uh, as she guides us through the invaluable insights of printed photos organization. Um, to you, Thank Kathy. you, Mickey. All right, thank you so much. Welcome everybody. I'm thrilled to be here with you all today from all the different places that you're coming from. Why don't we, uh, so again, in the you can write your questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A, and then Isabel is a whiz at this. We do this all the time. So she'll uh, read out the questions out loud, and then I'll answer it. So we make sure that all your questions get answered. And so why don't I am going to share my screen now and get started in my presentation. I always like to turn off my video at this point because then I'm not looking at myself. So, um, Five step to organizing your printed photos. It might be a, you know, it's, it's, it's a quite a, it might be a few more than just five steps, but overall it's five steps. So as uh, Mickey mentioned, my name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of the Photo Managers. I'm also the author of two books, Photo Organizing Made Easy, Going From Overwhelmed to Overjoyed, and a business roadmap for professional photo organizers, because in, whether you realize it or not, there is such a thing as a career of people who do this professionally for a living. And they are quite busy because as you could tell in the early part of the Q&A, everybody has lots of photos on both their phones and, and you know, people are just overwhelmed. So, but most importantly, I've been passionately sharing this message for the for the for decades now, actually, because I always start with the why. Because why does this topic matter? Why are you here? You know, why are 300 people right now? joining us live in the middle of busy days and, you know, thousands more had registered, but of course uh, they, they look for the replays is I love this quote. There have been great societies that did not have the wheel, but no societies that did not tell stories because really what we do with our photos is that's how we tell the stories of our lives. They are our connection to family, to friends, to the past. They're our message to the future. And if your photos are completely disorganized and you can't find the photos you care about because they're just lost either in a sea of digital photos, like somebody said they had 85,000 on their camera roll, which is actually not that many these days, or they're the thousands and thousands that we have in boxes, in outdated media formats, slides, negatives, you know, all the different ways we have them. 
you can't tell the story that you care about, right? So here's an example of what I mean by that. Here's just two photos that tell a story a lot about my family, right? It's going to be, you're going to know in a minute here, a lot about what, what, what I value. And it's just, I'm telling you this in just two photos. My husband is the youngest in the black and white photo. He grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. Every summer, his family would take a road trip in an old beat-up station wagon pulling a pop-up trailer in the 1960s. Their goal was to see all lower 48 states with their kids. We marvel today at how his family did that. No air conditioning, no seat belts, four kids, but it's a cherished member of his family. Both his sisters continued that tradition when they married, and I always had a joke that our marriage wouldn't have made it if I didn't agree as well to this tradition. We had to do it a little differently. We had only two kids and we would fly from state to state, rent a car and check off states at a map. That's the photo we took when we made it to all 48 states. So 25 later, years later, my kids and now my nieces and nephews, so the children of those kids in those photographs are doing the same. And there's a great quote by Mark Twain that says, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. So we learn that as families by traveling, right? And so that's a small example of why telling stories about a few photos is so important. But when your photo collection is completely a disorganized mess, it's really difficult to accomplish. So you ready to get started? <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna to share a high level overview of what we call the five steps that professional photo organizers use and that we will then dig into the most time consuming but critically important step, which is that third one, the sorting. These five steps will work both for printed photos and digital, but we'll talk more about digital when, uh, in the May uh, program that we do. Again, put your chat questions in the chat. We'll answer as many as we can at the at the end. Isabel is there also uh, in the Q&A. Put them in the Q&A, not the chat. So the first thing that really is important is you really need to define your goal, especially if there's a deadline. What is your goal of getting this these photos projects organized? Are you interested in passing down a photo legacy? Are you downsizing and want to pass photos on to the next generation? Take your time to think about this because knowing your goal and your reason, reason why will really help you stay motivated. Recently, I had uh, did some photo organizing myself when my son got engaged and I wanted to, I knew I wanted to create the video montage of, of, to show at the rehearsal dinner of him as a small child growing up. And then I needed to get photos from her family of her and then them meeting each other. And I knew there wouldn't be a dry eye in the house. But I set a goal, I knew, because I do this for a living, I knew in January they were getting married in September that I better get started in January because it just takes time. So that, so I had a goal. I was really motivated, right? There was, so do you have a special event coming up? Are you trying to, uh, again, are you downsizing? Are you just, it's just time. You know that this needs to be done. Uh, you've inherited boxes of photos, all of those things, but having a goal and knowing your why is really important. The next step is what we call assess the mess because you really need to know what you have. And we talk about the importance of gathering everything into one place. Now there's a little QR code there and you can download for free our inventory. We've created inventory forms to just make this easier so that you can check things off. We also have a really good idea where all your photos might be that you may not have thought to look. Uh, this can feel really time consuming, but you don't wanna skip this step because it'll save you the frustration of finding photos you really care about maybe after your project is completed. And you're gonna likely find some great photos that you've forgotten about. Plus other family members may have photos that you need as well. So here's just some example of places where you'll probably find photos. They're, well, they're probably in the photo albums. Maybe you printed photos over the years and put them in albums. It's really helpful to know I have five blue, you know, blue albums, or three red albums. Uh, maybe you have boxes of photos in your basement, in your attic. You have them in bins. Maybe you have slides that you inherited from your parents. Maybe you have negatives that you don't know where the photos from the negatives are, right? By gathering all of that and taking inventory, that at least you'll know where everything is and what you actually have. It's probably a lot more than you ever imagined. People grossly underestimate the number of photos that they own. If you ask people... I probably did a little survey, you know, how many photos do you think you have? People usually say things like two or 3,000, but we know from experience that the average family has 10 to 15,000 printed photos, negative slides, you know, different media, things like that. So that's why it's so important to get a sense of what it is that you actually have. Now, 
This is for printed photos. Here's some, some, some supplies that you wanna to gather together too when you're ready to go through this process. If you wanna take photos out of albums, it can be really helpful to have some dental floss or a craft spatula, especially if they're in those albums that they're adhered to and they, you have a really hard time getting them out. Now, what's great with the PhotoMine app is you don't always have to take them out of the albums, but you don't wanna leave your originals in fading you know, albums that are actually deteriorating the actual photo. You definitely want to have a notebook and a camera. Um, again, with your PhotoMine app, you don't necessarily need the camera as much, but a place to start taking notes of so that you know that what you have. Now, gloves and a mask are also are important, especially if your photos have been stored in humid places. You know, there's mold spores, there's dust, and it can get really messy to go through photos that haven't been taken out of boxes or albums for decades. For today, this used to be hard. People didn't know where to get a mask today. I would imagine most of us have masks hanging around somewhere since COVID, so you probably have access to that. Uh, we also recommend that you have uh, a series of boxes. They don't have to be archival, and we'll talk about why in a minute. And then this is really critically important as well. You really want to have a garbage bag next to you when you start this process. So step three, this is what takes the most time. And I always tell people, you know, think about it. You didn't gather and take all these photos in a weekend. You're not gonna probably complete this project in a weekend because you have a lot of photos. And so we're gonna talk about the acronym, the ABCs of photo organizing. I came up with this years ago as a way to help people visualize the process of what I was gonna help them with. And people, it's really been, uh, people love this. It's really a, a great way to visualize the process. So think about it. You've got all these photos. You kind of have a sense of what you have. Now what, right? How do you actually go through the process of curating the photo collection? So the first step is determining which photos are what we call your A photos. Those are album worthy. They're the best photos. They're the ones that belong in an album or belong in the cloud so you don't lose them. They're the ones that you would be devastated if you lost those, right? So those are the most, those are those really keeper photos. And we all have versions of those right in our lives those are the photos you want to digitize you want to make sure you scan them you want to back up you want to share them and you want to display it doesn't mean we're going to put all these photos into albums it just means that they're album worthy right as you come across those you want to put them in that a you know photo safe box or something so you're separating them out if you're creating albums in your digitally you could kind of do a folder or you know your favorites the B though is really important because it's really, really hard to decide if it's an A photo or a B photo, right? How many of you can relate to this? You're looking at two photos, they're pretty similar and you're just like, ah, you're stuck. You can't make a decision, right? So those are the photos we say that they support the best. Those are the ones that you're not 100% sure, but you know that you can't throw them away, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I joke about those are the ones that you wanna put back in a box and if you don't get around to doing anything with them, put a note in the box and say that if I've passed away and you've inherited this box, you have my permission to, to discard these photos as well. Because no, nothing's worse than the guilt people feel inheriting boxes of photos with people in it that they don't know who they are. I have a great story about this. It happened in my life as well, in spite of the fact that my Auntie Rose, my father's sister, who was the keeper of the family stories, I have been doing this for decades and I'd always say, Auntie Rose, there's no more pictures, right? You, you know, no, Kathy, Kathy, I promise we have no more photos. I, there's, you have all the family photos. Well, sure enough, she passed away and we went to her house and when we went into the way back part of the basement, what did I find? I found so many photos of my dad and her and so many people. I have no idea who they are. And I did exactly what I've, the opposite of what I've told people to do. I have not thrown those away yet. They are now in my basement because for the same reason you all can't throw photos away as well, right? And so I so wish that, uh, I will probably put a note on that for my kids say, I couldn't do it, but you're welcome to discard these photos. That brings me to the C. So yes, you can throw photos away. And we joke, the C is the trash can, right? So what kind of photos do you throw away? All of your blurry photos, the doubles, you all of us got double photos in the years that we were printing, uh, we were getting photos, right? You don't need to keep those. The scenery photos, the photos of the, sh of the sunsets, the photos of flowers, the photos of this beautiful snow, all the photos that, and also if you traveled a lot, if you took, you know, 25 photos of 
the Grand Canyon, you know, just keep one or two of the Grand Canyon. Ideally, the Grand Canyon will look the same, you know, 100 years from now as it used to. I used to say that all the time now. Who knows? With weather extremes and things, things could change. But you want to just maybe keep one or two. But that's what's overwhelming you. If you're keeping all of the photos that you've taken, it's too much. And people aren't interested in viewing thousands and thousands of photos over and over again. They're interesting in the S part, the photos that tell the story, right? Those two photos I shared at the beginning of weren't beautifully composed photos, the photo of the back of the station wagon and the one of my son and daughter um, when we did the 48 states, they're, they're pretty basic photos, but they're the photos I care a lot about because they tell a story. So you want to be looking for those S photos that tell the story. And that's, that's what we care about. That's why we take photos. And that's what people are going to care about into the next generation. So again, don't forget the story. I always say that um, nothing, you know, a picture of a single tree in the background might be meaningless, but that could be the one that tells the story because you know your great grandfather planted that when he passed away. So those are the, the ones that you really wanna keep. Photos really tell um, stories. They have huge sentimental value. They serve as a window to the past. They help trigger memories and emotions. And images only capture a fraction of the story, right? Well, photos freeze moments in time. They don't speak for themselves. The stories behind those images can get lost or forgotten. And it's really important that you tell those stories. So this is why AI, I always say, will never tell the full story. So there is, you know, AI is phenomenal and it's helping us in so many ways. And as AI gets more and more um, smart, you know, as we train more and more, this photo already AI would, would tell us that this is, uh, who these people are, where this photo was taken, the date it was taken. Uh, it knows it was at Bradley International Airport. It knows it's Josh Nelson, my son, in Belinda. They know it. It'll knows probably what flowers there are in there. It looks like Josh was holding something in his hand. It might know someday that it was a bottle of water. There's people in the background. I think AI is getting to the point where facial recognition might even identify who some of those people are. But what this photo can never tell you, unless I tell you that is that this is, uh, my son is adopted. We found his birth uh, through through a, one of those DNA testing out of the blue. We get a note, how is it possible that you're my first cousin, my aunt, you know, Gabriella and uncle Raul are your parents. I knew nothing about that. And so we had a connection. We flew her to the U uh, to Connecticut to meet my son. And Joshua will tell you, this is the first time he looked in the face of somebody who looked just like him. And it was such a powerful experience for him. That's a story about what just seems like just a regular old photo, right? But there's there's so many, that's a rich story. And the story continues about that relationship and what's happening. And this is the day it began. So that's why that S piece of the photo organizing part is so important. So one last piece of advice on this long, this part, the sorting process, which takes the longest and really is something that should be a joyful process for you as you go through it. And you're going to feel emotions. You know, I, I've shared positive experiences, but if I see photos of my brother or my parents who've passed away, I feel a deep sense of sadness, especially around my brother. It wasn't a loss I expected and wanted, but, um, but there's stories about him that need to be told. So my kids know their uncle Jack that they uh, only knew as children and don't know as an adult. So here's another thing I think is really important is you can break the rules. A lot of people feel like you have to organize your printed photos in chronological date order. I love to tell people, look, we live in time, today happens to be Thursday, right? It's Thursday in March, 2024. Tomorrow will be Friday. You know, the next day is Saturday, but we think and remember thematically. So if you haven't crept kept all your photos in chronological order. It's not that interesting anyway. What we want to know is, are you a family that, what are the themes of your life? Are you a family that love to travel? Are you a family that love to, you know, go to sporting events? Are you a family that love to celebrate birthdays or different holidays? Um, Halloween, for some reason, I've worked with so many clients and some families love Halloween. It's not my favorite holiday, but I work with one family and every year they we ended up creating a photo book and uh, organized and then scanned her photos from all the Halloween celebrations that they did, because that was a big family tradition that she did with her children. And then they now have carried it on with their children. And it didn't matter that we had, you know, photos of her boys when they were three next to photos of their boys when they were 10 or 12. It's much more interesting to see photos over different time periods than it is to see everything in date, time, chronological order. 
So I'm giving you this permission right now to break any rules that you have in your mind about how this is supposed to be done and do what works for you. Done is better than perfect. So now the fourth step is what we call save. This is critically important. Today, our photos are more at risk than ever because of being last from uh, natural or digital disasters. Um, and we really recommend that you use the three, two, one backup method. This is a um, recognized by you know archivists and people all across the world that this is the best map method. It's about it's called redundancy. And so what I mean by that is that you need to keep three copies of any important file. You have to have your primary source and two backups. You keep the files on two different media types to get to protect against different hazards and store one copy offsite, ideally outside your home or on, on the cloud, right? So let's use an example of this wedding photo. Uh, we come across a grandparent's wedding photo, right? Let's assume we scanned it and that you've added the metadata. So we know it's 1935, June 6, and it's the Smith wedding, right? That photo lives on your computer at home. That's your primary copy. But you also ideally are backing this up on an external hard drive or somewhere on your computer. That's your second copy. But you should also have an online cloud backup solution. That's your third copy located off-site. So that if anything happens to your home, those first two copies would not be at risk. Uh, and an example I have about the external hard drive is I was really proud of myself, you know, backing up my photos both on my computer and external hard drive, which was attached to my computer until somebody broke into my house and stole my computer along with the external hard drive that was attached to my computer. That was years ago before we were using the cloud the way that we are today. So I have a good six months worth of family photos that I are I could never get back. So now for the fourth and final step is what I call the most fun, the whole reason we're doing this, right? We do this because we wanna share these photos. And there are so many fun ways that you can share photos. I think photo books today are coming back in popularity. It's uh, interesting. I think we realize more and more, especially with children, that we don't want them attached to screens at all times, right? They're all, we're already knowing that screen time is not good for young brains. So if you take lots of photos in your hand, your phone or your iPad to your kids, you're kind of repeating the pattern that people are trying to get away from. So print some of those photos and put them in an album. Tell your family stories using the old fashioned album approach and read books to your kids about their family history or to your grandchildren, to the next generation. Another great way to share photos is online, you know, wall galleries in your home. So you walk in and there's like a timeline of different people. There's amazing online photo galleries. You can use video slideshows like I did for my son. I mean, there's no end to the great ways that you can share your family photos. And people love looking at photos and seeing that history come back alive in front of them. So that's the most important part. I feel like the whole reason we do all of these steps is to get to this, set, this part of what we call the sharing. So let's review. You want to set a goal. You want to assess the mess, know what you're dealing with. You want to start using the ABCs as a way to get yourself moving forward in that sorting curating process. You want to make sure that you're backing your photos up. And then you really want to start the fun process of sharing those photos. So we're excited now to, you know, in a second here, we're going to take your your questions. Hopefully I've given you just enough to kind of get you started. But again, if you didn't get that digital uh, download, you can, you know, grab that QR code. We have those free forms. I also write a monthly newsletter. It comes out every Friday. It's called Kathy's uh, Picks. I just search the internet and it's curated content of really inspiring stories about photos and discovery, usually tips on all sorts of different topics. It's not a salesy. It comes just on Fridays at the same time. Uh, we get a lot of great feedback. People love that newsletter. And if you really want to jump in further on this, we do have what we call photo managers and training. It's a year long uh, photo organizing course with all, hundreds of other people from around the world. You can join that and save 10% by using PhotoMind 10. Uh, we started that in January. It's become quite popular, but you're really working on your photo project with others. And we send you uh, weekly updates, emails, lots of different ways to, uh, and we do both printed photos, videos. We talk about videos, keepsake items and things. So you can learn more about that by also uh, that QR code. So hopefully you've had a chance to gather all that. And I'm going to take uh, come back on screen and come off mute. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen, and then we will be ready to see if you have um, if questions have come in on the Q and A. And hopefully, that was helpful for everybody. Thank you so much, Katie. That was so inspiring and 
so overwhelming to know how like how much work you have, but if you do it in the right way, an organized way, it's, it's so easy and and like even fun. So we have a bunch of questions. I think Isabel can guide you through the question that are left in the Q and A section. Some are for photo mine that I will answer. Um, so Isabel, so maybe you can yep. guide us. Now the first one, um, which for Kathy is about a, what a photo legacy is. So can you share a little bit about what a photo legacy is versus passing down to the next generation? What's the difference? <laughs> that's a great, that's a wonderful Those question. I'm gonna talk about that a lot more next month or next, I mean, the next uh, session. You know, the word legacy is really crept into the vocabulary today of people. I think what I mean by legacy is that we all have a story to tell. And I think in the past, we used to feel like legacies were only for like famous people or people who, you know, made an impact that we kind of all know about, but you've made an impact in your life. And so it's kind of the same thing. But I think when you when you realize that that you have a legacy and it's worth telling it. And it can be just and that's what I mean by legacy. So it's um, it's worth taking the time. Once cameras, I believe we're here, once we human beings, we we were, we're an oral tradition, you know, humans, we've told stories always, right, all our lives uh, throughout history around the campfire. I mean, ever since human beings were created, but I feel like once the camera was invented, we kind of became more visual storytellers. And so your legacy a lot of times is, can be tracked by the visual storytelling piece of it. And that's usually through photos. So that's kind of what I mean by when I say legacy. Thank you. Um, and when you're sorting your photos, do you mix family um, with very old generations with your current photos, such as grandparents' photos with your current photos? You know, so that's a personal decision. A lot of times people, that's what I want to say. You can break the rules, though. There is no right or wrong answer to that. I personally would do that because... I believe in narrative, like I'm, I'm a storyteller by nature. I love stories and, and narrative. So I do, I think it's really interesting to have old photos juxtaposed with more current photos, just the difference of hair, how we dressed, how we pose for photos. I mean, you know, my photos of my grandparents, the, the handful that I have, I remember I have one that my mom, they were so dressed up. They, my grandfather had a hat and she, my grandmother had gloves and she had a purse and she was in a dress. And my mom always told me that's, they were on their way to the airport. That's how you, they used to get dressed to go to the airport. Now we go to the airport in our pajamas, our slippers, you know, those are kind of interesting, uh, I think, stories that can be told when you put things next to each other like that. It's really interesting. I love that. Um, once you've digitized a printed photo, can you write on the photo? On the back of the photo? Is that, I guess, what they're asking? I think so. I think that's what they're Yeah, asking. absolutely. You want to use a, a, a photo safe pencil, like a blue, they're, they're a soft lead pencil, so, or not an ink. Even though you've, you know, you've scanned it, I don't think you should, you want to maintain the integrity of the printed photo that you keep. Again, I don't think you should keep all the printed photos. You should definitely throw, I use the 80-20 rule, but keep those Printed, I don't believe you should throw away your original copies of those printed photos either. Not all, I mean, a good majority of them, but I would keep a small amount, even if they've been digitized. Okay. I will answer this. Uh, also, um, we also have like a feature inside PhotoMind, which allows you to scan the back of the photo, which means that you can actually flip the photo around and take a photo of the back of the photo with everything that's inside. And the app will will attach it to the original photo that you scanned. It means that you can flip between uh, the original one and the back of the photo. So you can definitely keep this as well. And we also OCR, which means that we will take the text out of it. If it's the date, location, wherever it's in the photo, we'll put in the metadata. So like once you go to the single photo uh, page inside the app and you go scan back of the photos, so uh, you're able to flip it and scan it and it'd be attached to the original photos. So yeah. Keep it as it's important, but you can also scan it as well and be attached, like inside photo mine. Uh, in That's great that I didn't realize that you kept you capture the metadata that way, and so you don't have to go in and put that in yourself. It's captured exactly. because of that. It's That's awesome. Effective. That's a great feature. Yeah. Um, and um, speaking about the app, I think this next question is specifically about photo mine. Mm -hmm. When you're scanning photos using the app how can we share photos with family members so that they can have an electronic copy? That's a great question. And I think PhotoMind emphasized a lot of you know, work in our like 10 years of learning that we wanted people to not just scan the photos, but also be able to share it. So we have a bunch of ways. So you can download it to your camera roll or you can share it via email or WhatsApp or message, whatever. 
but you can also export those photos to Google Photos and keep it there in your account. So it will create a new album of photo mine inside your uh, Google Photos account. Um, and also two more ways is, is basically that you can create a code um, and give it to your friends and family. It will direct them to download an app called, called PhotoMind Share, which is free to download and no subscription in any kind. Um, and once they opt in with the code, they'll be able to see everything that you scan. And this will be updated. Every photo that you will scan will be there as well. So there's, there's a whole way to do that. Of course, you can send yourself an email from inside the app and view all the photos online if you are a member of PhotoMind to create an account. Um, so it's, <laughs> there's a bunch of ways and, and you could play with it um, like easy as you go. Um, yep. Perfect, thank you. Um, Kathy, we have a couple of questions about uh, storing photos and backups, because you mentioned that um, that is one of the five steps. So if someone doesn't have capacity to hold all the photos or even most of the photos on their computer, where should the first backup be stored instead of the computer? And um, following that is, is Google Photos a good, back, a good cloud backup, if you can share some ideas on some um, cloud backup? resources or, or software that are that our professionals yeah. usually recommend. Most people don't have the capacity on their computers anymore, but you can get an external hard drives have come down so much in price. So you could get a two terabyte hard drive for under a hundred dollars today. I mean, and they're small, they're like a deck of cards of the size of your phone where they used to be like, you know, they were enormous. So I would recommend, um, and you could just plug that into your computer and usually your computer will recognize that if you're new to it, or you could find a uh, a Google, you know, you can Google how to how to set up your external hard drive. It's in, um, and then pull that. That's that's that backup there. And then um, personally, Google Photos is a good back. You know, there's Google Photos, Amazon, OneDrive, Dropbox. I mean, there's a lot of backup uh, places that people put their photos. Uh, will keep their photos. Um, but also backing up your computer, we recommend a company called Backblaze. That's who the photo managers use. It's inexpensive. It runs behind the scenes. It's just backing up everything, you know, continually all the time. So that way there, you could always uh, get a copy of everything that you've lost. It's And it's relatively inexpensive. So I would really recommend um, if you don't have a backup running in the background, something like Backblaze, I would recommend. So there's that, it's that concept of redundancy which actually the more technology proficient we become, the more redundancy we need. Like it's, it adds layers of complexity sometimes to our lives, right? Oh, I got to remember all these things. But um, we always say it's not a question of if your hard drive will flash or your computer will crash. It's just a matter of when. So, the, so you definitely want to make sure that you're following these best practices for backup. Yeah, we had someone earlier um, mention that they, had lost all of their photos, their um, their kids' childhood photos from a house fire in 2000. And um, I don't think people, and that, that's awful, but I don't think people realize that similar things can happen even in the digital aspect as well. Um, so we do need to keep an eye on on where we're keeping the backups and, and ensuring that we have multiple copies. Um, Mickey, there's a question about um, any best practices for scanning photos without glare and reflection. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we advise users uh, to scan the photos next to a window that will bring a little more natural light into the scene um, and not uh, try to avoid any direct light like above the photos. So if you scan like <laughs> during the day, it will be easiest for you to do it next to a window. Um, try to avoid the glare. Some people even take some you know, glass and, and put it on the photos as it can avoid some of uh, yeah, some of the glare. Um, yeah, but the best advice will be to scan next to a window, which will bring like more natural light um, and to avoid any direct light, like on top of the photos. Um, and Kathy, a question about uh... Printing, where to print your photos or um, create uh, online albums after you've scanned the photos? Gosh, there's so many um, companies today that you could do that. It's kind of coming back in a big way. There's interesting that uh, and the creativity behind that, but it depends on where you are, I suppose. In the, I mean, let's see, who are some of the ones that we uh, 
mixed books. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with Shutterfly. I think they, they're kind of the big brand recognition. Um, there's different qualities. You might want to uh, poke around and just maybe take the same set of photos and and print them through two or two two different companies. You know, they're all probably priced in the same price range and see who does a better quality in terms of the printing. Um, I know our local pharmacy still, uh, I had to get a passport photo printed recently and I went to my Walgreens and there were people picking up printed photos on a regular basis. Uh, there's companies that will mail you photos, you know, so there's lots of different options out there. And um, a question for you, Mickey, can uh, users make an album in Google or OneDrive and save the album to PhotoMine? Uh, they can import all the photos um, to PhotoMine, but it needs to be from the camera roll. Um, so it's not directly from Google Photos. So the best way to do it is to download the photos to your camera roll and then import the photos. I must say that if you have photos of photo albums that you wish to import, the app will also like recrop it for you. So it will be like automatically cropped like once you import it like into the app. So if you have, you know, all like photo albums that were scan with a digital camera and they're not cropped like aligningly, you can import them into PhotoMine and the app will use the algorithm of the cropping and will crop it for you. Uh, yeah, but to take an album from Google Photo or OneDrive, you need to download the photos um, and do that there. If you have an account, you can download to your computer and then and then import and upload the photos to our like web portal um, easily. Thank you. Um, Kathy, could you share your screen again quickly with the QR codes? There was a question for someone who joined late that missed those. Oops, there my, <laughs> let me see here. I got to find my, oh, I got too much. Hang on, let me, let me uh, stop sharing my screen and go <laughs> make sure that I, where did that go? Oh, there it is. Um, hang on. I come out of uh, slides. Okay, share screen. Here we go. Um. Okay, there we go. So those are, uh, again, the, the QR code is for the free uh, checklist forms, which will help you both uh, both printed and physical where all your digital photos and uh, printed photos are. It's great checklist that our members, our members use with their clients. I have my newsletter. And then we do have a one year uh, called photo manager and training. It's a wonderful profession, uh, whether you want to do it professionally, lots of people need help, but you can... Um, join that program and spend a whole year with a lot of other people doing, going through this whole process, learning a lot, and you can save 10% through our photo mine. Uh, I'll leave that up for a minute. Isabel, you got another question? Yeah, there was a question about um, scanning resolution. Uh, if you're scanning photos to keep forever, is 300 DPI enough or should you use 600? And I don't know if you have any comments here as well, Mickey. Yeah, I'll let Mickey also answer for the yeah. photo managers as a as professionals, our best practice is 600 DPI as professionals doing it for other people. But I think um, Mickey, Mickey can answer in terms of uh, 300 is good for, you know, because you can reprint at 300 as well still. Yeah, I guess. But I I would say that if you scan with photo mine, I guess um, that it's taking a photo of a photo. So the DPI is not like really relevant for this case. Um, it's only a matter if you take like a flatbed scanner uh, and you use it. So okay, then at 300 uh, DPI will be good enough for the printing and everything else. But if you use PhotoMine, it means that you're taking a photo of a photo um, and that's uh, like all the DPI is not relevant. Um, like as it's not scanning and the DPI is only for scanning. You will get a resolution of between eight to nine megapixel if you scan with PhotoMine. And if you scan one by one, if you try to do more than one photo at a time, it will be like lower resolution between like four and five megapixel. So we'd like to look at like, like as it, mm -hmm. as it is. And um, do either of you have any thoughts or comments about the photo stick that automatically pulls images from computers? Our experience has not been positive with that for the most part because it pulls everything and it can tend to be uh, hard to find them and things. I know they they advertise those a lot, but it'll take every find like every JPEG, every even screenshot and things like that. Um, my ex people have not we haven't had positive experience ourselves with that. I don't know, Mickey, if you have an opinion on on those products. 
I'm not sure I understand it. <laughs> it's called, they're, uh, they're, they market them that you put, you just plug it into your computer and it's going to go find all the JPEGs or uh, everything and pull it onto that little, uh, into yeah. onto the flash drive. We tried it once, but in some of the cases, like it didn't work. Um, some of the computer, it doesn't recognize them and it doesn't find them. So, so I guess, uh, yeah, not positive experience for, for us as well. Um, Kathy, you showed the picture of, uh, in the backup slide, where that picture sort of went to those three different um, places. Can you explain, and then there was a, a file name below that. Can you explain how to accomplish that? Oh, let's see. I got to go back to my, <laughs> let's see, this would have been. It would have been slide 12. Uh, slide. Thank you, Isabel. She made my slides. Um, okay. So the question is, um, how did we do the, the date? Correct. That is when you, uh, that's adding the metadata that, uh, which is what Mickey mentioned as well, but we, that was probably, that would have been keyed in like by a right click or depending on what photo organizing software you're using, even if it's just a file, you just, you know, if you right click on your computer, you can, uh, you name a photo. And so this is a naming, it's called a naming convention where you put the date, the year dash the month, if you know it, the date wedding Smith. So in other words, if somebody looked in their computer someday, and they just put wedding, you know, Smith wedding or 1993, you know, that's the, that's the value of adding the metadata. What's wonderful about digital photos today is that metadata comes in a lot of times where the photo was taken, the, you know, facial, we're talking about facial recognition. You can find every photo of, you know, your kids or things like that, or dogs. But when with printed with photos that you're digitizing, you have to add the metadata otherwise uh, to be able to find the photos into the future. Yeah, and the and metadata is. The metadata is just. Meta go ahead, you're right. Like say the, the same the, thing. What's on the back of the printed photo? We talked about earlier. You know, mm -hmm. can you read the back of of a printed photo, or um, do you scan the back of a printed photo? And and usually, whatever's written on the back of the printed photo is some sort of metadata. It, it often will tell us the year that it was sort of taken, who's in the photo, you know, the more information that's written on the back, the better. And, but when you're scanning it, you want to make sure that that information that's on the back of the photo becomes part of the file, the digital file moving forward so that that same information can be found. Right. You don't want to add all these photos into your computer without take, taking the time to identify them and, go, you know, going back later. But what's great, PhotoMind actually prompts you to answer to to add this information as well when you do it, but um, and then the other thing about if you're doing it more where you're right clicking or adding the information, you want to just make sure that you're consistent. So in other words, you don't want to say some photos are Smith wedding, and then some photos are wedding Smith, or it's really about picking a a a way that you're going to add the metadata and then being consistent. Um. How do you identify the photos? Uh, you mean who, how did we know this was like a what the Smith's wedding photo? Um, yeah, let's let's do that. Guess, we'll start with it, it was it was sort of a, a an open ended question, sort of how do you identify the photos? Yeah, that's why we're talking about the importance of doing this, right? Because if somebody hasn't identified, I'm like I have a that big box bag full of photos from my aunt that I inherited with. I don't, I don't know who half the people are in those photos. So if you have old family relatives, you can ask them. That's a wonderful thing to do. Um, but get that information. Otherwise, it's lost to history. Yeah, that's why it's important to to talk to the people that that own the photos and that have captured them over time as well. Um, you mentioned you're going to talk about storage boxes, archival or not. Can you share a little bit about storing printed photos? For the process of the sorting, I mentioned they didn't have to be archival quality. In other words, they can just be big boxes and things. But for the photos that you want to keep into the future, you want to make sure that you use an archival safe storage box. Uh, you can. We use a company called Archival Methods in Rochester, New York. I'm sure if you, you know, there's other companies throughout the world that offer those. You're going to pay a little bit more, but they uh, don't allow in UV light. They're um, the 
the products that are used doesn't let off any gases. So they're considered long-term, safe for long-term storage so that the box itself isn't going to help deteriorate the actual photos that are in it. That's what I meant by archival storage. And do you have any examples of online photo galleries? I could show mine. Uh, there, there's companies like, so Smug Mug, Forever, Permanent. Um, i trying to think of who else are some that, you know, they, they're they kind of created, a lot of times professional photographers have used them, but they've been, they're created as a way to uh, allow you to go in multiple people and see it, like, you know, in a beautiful way on your phone. Milio is another company that we work uh, closely with that allows you to um, share photos with a really, uh, really great calendar view. So there is so much technology out there and so many companies that have created really great things, but you know, as the, the average consumer, you're not looking for all of those probably, but um, there's a lot of really fun things happening in this space in terms of viewing opportunities and things. And Mickey, there's a question about um, cloud storage with a photo mine. How does that work? Do you have any recommendations? Uh, like once you create an account, uh, so of course all your photos are, are backed up in your account. Uh, so it means that if you lose your phone or or anything happen, uh, you can retrieve it, and you can and you also have access to our like online portal, which allows you to view like all the photos online. Um, yeah, there's unlimited backup there, so you can scan as much photos as you wish. Um, should photo negatives be saved? <laughs> of course, <laughs> in my opinion. Those are treasures that nobody can use and nobody can see. And they're holding treasures. So absolutely, with PhotoMind, uh, you can scan negatives as well. Um, it's, it's more difficult and the quality will be a little bit lower. But again, it will extract the negative directly from the negative itself and we'll put it in a digital file and then we allows you to have like more feature to like enhance it, maybe to colorize it or to Sharpie and to make it more vivid. Uh, yeah, but definitely I think those are treasures there that would never develop or maybe develop and got lost. Uh, yeah, so definitely. Um, there's a great question here about sort of the order of organizing and sorting and scanning. So um, this person says they have hundreds of photos. Maybe it would be faster to sort after they're digitally captured. Doing it before seems like it could slow down the process with decision-making and after you'd just be um, grabbing and dragging the important photos. What are your thoughts? I have some thoughts. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I mean, a couple, we, well, if you're paying for it, I mean, this is you're doing it yourself, but, you know, certainly if uh, from a best practice as professional photo managers, we don't, we think it's better to sort, uh, curate the collection before, so then you're only scanning the ones that you really care about. So you don't, the thing is, if you're going to scan everything and go back, then definitely be really diligent with your delete button, because otherwise you can just, it's like garbage in, garbage out. So if you have a lot of garbage already there, at some point you're going to have to take the time. It depends on how, maybe if you're more computer proficient and you're good at, you know, uh, highlighting and, click, you know, and, and deleting, then I would suggest go ahead and do that. But if you're, uh, but the more curation you do on either side, the better for the future, because nobody wants all of the photos that you ever take, you know, we want to inherit that hard, that, you know, that hard drive or that collection of, of all those photos. If you haven't taken the time to do this process. Yeah, and I, I like a, a saying that we um, often have within our community is that you don't want to digitize the mess that you have sort of physically. So it, it, it can be tempting to sort of take it all and digitize it. But what you're doing is whatever mess, if you will, that you have as a physical in analog boxes and albums, you're turning into a digital mess that you're then going to have to sort through anyway. And so a lot of our professionals will recommend the, to um, sort ahead of time and then just scan and digitize the ones that mean the most, that matter the most. Um, and then, of course, keeping backup cop physical backup copies of everything that you want to keep. 
Another quick thought too, in terms of the time factor is nostalgia gets in the way, right? I can go through somebody else's photo collection a whole lot faster than I'm going to go through my own photo collection because I'm going to get caught up in the memories. So we recommend that if you use like a timer and just set like 30 minutes for 30 minutes, I'm because you'll have plenty of time to do that reminiscing once this is done. So for 30 minutes, don't allow yourself to, you know, just say, all right, I'm going to set my timer and see how many photos I can just sort in 30 minutes. And then take a break, walk away, maybe do it the next day again. So that's another little tip to help you deal with the feelings that overwhelm you when you look at photos maybe you haven't seen in years and years. And that does slow down the process for people. Um, a question about PhotoMind, Mickey. Is there a way to merge multiple albums without duplicating photos? This person has multiple copies of the same photo that they don't that they don't need. Oh, oh, you're on mute, Mickey. Sorry for that. You want to interfere? So um, there is a way to find duplication uh, inside the app. Uh, so it will let you know uh, if you found like two photos at the same time. Then you can uh, just delete it. Um, no, and uh, yeah, that's the easiest way. And for anybody that doesn't think that's a problem, everybody, duplicates is a nightmare for everybody. <laughs> we all, duplicates. Yeah, you're not alone there. Um, as far as uh, really old pictures, so what, pic what about the pictures that have been saved in old, old photo books with a black background kept in place with uh, little gold triangle corners? How are those removed from the photo books scanned and then how do they keep the information written behind them to make sure that they stay with the proper picture? Okay, I think um, like inside PhotoMind, if you scan those photos with the app, it will automatically crop it from the background. So it means that you don't have to take them out. It will take only the content of the photos, will extract it and put it in a digital file. Um, if you wish to take them out to scan the back of the photos, you can also do that, but it, there, there's actually, uh, no need to take them out if you don't need the back of the photos. So you can just snap a photo of this album page with two or three photos at once and the app will automatically crop it for you. And if and the writing is on the back, then you do have to take it out. So I, 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 the back, And then maybe you could replace it back in. Sometimes those albums are pretty, you know, uh, you might want to then like replace the, you know, buy a higher quality album and, and kind of reduplicate it if you want to keep it in an album. Things, it depends on how, how fragile those album pages are, I think. Um, and we've been talking a lot about sort of bringing the printed into the digital. And once people have scanned their, their printed and now have a combination of their printed and their digital, how do they sort of combine them and work with those together? I mean, that, again, then then the, the photo organizing software program that you choose to have keep your photos is kind of a decision that you'll make. Like, do you are you using Google Photos or are you an iPhone user and on your, you know, you're going to merge them. I have personally merged all my scan photos into my uh, photo library. So if I go to my photo library and I want to look for, you know, I haven't done by albums in years, I could quickly find any photo from that I ever, you know, my all the albums and printed photos from the past. Um, so again, it's, you can merge them and then you just, it's again, that's why that metadata or deciding if you're putting them in albums and things like that is so important because then I can quickly search uh, for what I want. Awesome. Well, we have lots and lots of more questions, but unfortunately due to time. Too many questions we, we have. I think we should do like another to, webinar yeah. only for that, only for questions. Exactly, exactly. But um, Mickey, you mentioned uh, that possibly reaching out to um, to PhotoMind support for PhotoMind questions. And then if you have more general photo organizing questions or um, would like help in that regard, you can also email us at support at the photo We have we do have a YouTube channel as well that we uh, we put free videos up. Um, that's a great resource to get started with. Awesome. And I uh, reminding everyone that we're going to have two more webinars in the upcoming months. If we'll be successful, maybe more in the future. Um, so April 18th. So we have tips on creating your photo legacy. 
um, in May 16 is going to be tips on managing digital photo chaos. Uh, and you're more than welcome to, to email us any questions to support at photomind.com. Um, we will answer um, like all the questions there um, on any topic and we'll help you and guide you through the app. Um, if this is a wrap up, I guess. <laughs> um, oh boy, those are a lot of questions. I started looking, I started answering, I was stop. Yeah, we could, um, um, but we can say it like, uh, yeah, like five more minutes after like the end of the webinar to answer all the questions by like by by, by writing. Um, yeah, but if you have anything else to say, Kathy, I guess. Um, no, thank you. I mean, it's been wonderful. Thank you, Mickey, and for the photo mine audience. I'm thrilled to be able to help again. Uh, it'll there'll be we'll send these links in that somebody just said they couldn't see the QR codes. We'll send these in the email. We will, um, you can go to the photomanagers.com, sign up for my newsletter. We do answer a lot of questions as well. That way we do, we also have YouTube videos and this is, this is a worldwide problem and everybody needs help. It's, you can't answer it all in one session. It's, uh, it's just a process of learning and learning some more, but it's worth the time and effort. So I'm thrilled that you joined us today and thank you again, Mickey, for your, for ha having us. Thank you so much, Kathy. And Isabel, uh, we will send a recording of this webinar tomorrow. Um, so we'll, you'll have everything there um, with uh, Kathy's presentation and the QR code and everything. Um, yeah, and see you on our next webinar next month. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye.